Hello, everyone. My name is Gary. Welcome to another episode of um, XYZ Podcast in collaboration with Sai Gong Hoi Arts Festival. Um, today is a, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a, it's a morning. Good morning to two ladies who join, join me in this uh, special podcast. Um, well, I mean, this is gonna, going to come to an end for the festival. So we kind of like, you know, any listeners who came across this podcast, maybe it's a bit too tight for you, but I thought to catch up on all the stories and also inspirations that um, happened behind the artwork. And also, I, I hope the listeners can know more about the artist. So uh, today I have CS and also Clementine or Heyman who joined me in this episode. So welcome on board, ladies. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining uh, this uh, episode. So could you please introduce yourself? And uh, as I know, this um, particular p pavilion, which is called Joy Again Stories Dashing Through Weather's Labs, um, is a collaboration between One Bite and the Moving Atlas. And uh, before the podcast, we briefly mentioned, uh, well, CS and Clementine briefly mentioned that um, it was it's kind of like a second episode or a sequel from their last year's work. So uh, welcome on board. And could you please tell us about yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm CS. And uh, I, I was trained in landscape architecture for my master. But then I had a background in, in humanities. So I guess it's a quite, quite a special point of me because I, I did make that shift from, you know, really different uh, uh, disciplines. So, um, yeah, and, and for my kind of my creative, you know, career life, <laughs> I did a lot of illustrations uh, back then in, in universities. So I guess it is quite a new thing for us to take on a spatial project. And um, Clementine, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Yes. I'm Clementine and I studied some humanities and politics as well back in universities and then I started a career right now um, as a freelance writer or co copywriter, also a translator and um, so I mainly worked around words and text and so for this um, artist duel with CS we are a combo to work together because CS will mainly be working around spatial or conceptual design. And while I will contribute myself as much as I can on the text and stories. Um, so for the Moving Atlas, we have come together since last year. I mean, the year before last year, <laughs> I still cannot change my word and um, so we have come together in 2022 um, for the artwork called The Moving Atlas basically and then for the detour our design festival in Hong Kong and we worked together for that Moving Atlas project um, which is a project documenting people's um, moving experience they move houses and that is an experience we realized it is a common and mutual experience for everybody so everybody moves in a way so we just decided to document people's stories um as a moving project so our name basically moving at last we have resonated with two concepts Firstly, it's about moving in general, people's mobility and um, changes. And secondly, we would like to cover the moving part of the stories, which is the emotionals or the emotions or the sentiments behind moving. So that's the main concept we have established so far. And for the detour project, we also try to collect moments of people and movements of people and through their landscapes, through the impermanence and changes and moving as a feeling basically in general. 
So um, we would like to retell the stories of unimportant moments that make us who we are. So uh, that, that's, so that yeah. is a little background of ourselves. Cool. That's very interesting, the moving actors. Uh, well, I mean, before that, there were, I mean, before there, there were a few episodes before this, they were like talking about the geographical point of view they're looking into the history looking into the culture looking into geographical uh elements but in this case the moving atlas seems to be more focusing on people as the central point looking at particularly on uh, movement which is quite interesting the word the moving atlas is kind of reminds me of a a book there's uh, there's a book it's called moving atlas as well but i can't remember who wrote it um i'm gonna throw something fun here it's gonna quite spontaneous is there any particular book that you refer to? I mean, when it comes to the moving atlas, is there any particular um inspiration for you uh, behind the moving atlas? Is it maybe I don't know, Yan Gao, maybe looking into the public space or or I don't know, is there any particular book that really inspired this um movement in a way? Well, I can't think of a particular book, but certainly um, the theories and the studies like back then when we were studying, maybe like I was studying landscape architecture, so I got in touch with a lot of, you know, uh, urban theories, but then sentiments in cities and also like memories associated with a particular place that is quite fundamental because when you when you look at it, think about it, it seems very mundane, like you live in a space and then you are used to everything. You have your own routines. But then if you have to step back and look at it almost at a bird eyes view, you will see a lot of special moments and that resonate with a lot of different people. No matter you are geographically or even temporally, you are apart, but then the experience is quite universal, yet unique to everyone. So I guess that's a one of the key concepts of like both of our works uh, in the tour and also in Sai Kong Hoi, is that uh, the audience is part of our um, part of our artwork. So when they come here, they would reflect and then have their own interpretation of the concept. I, I guess that's one of the key interactions that we want to curate in our creations. Mm -hmm. I agree with CS and by talking about any specific inspiration, I can think of one of the main inspirations are coming from um, our friends because we have a lot of urbanist friends in Hong Kong mm. and we draw some inspiration from them but also on a personal side, I love reading and I read I read quite a lot of novels back in the years. And then I can think of one of the main inspirations as coming from a Polish writer called Olga Tokasuk. Um she's great and I draw a lot of inspiration from her and also the other writer based in Hong Kong is called Tan Wai, Chan Wai. And I love her writing as well. So I draw, so when I write, I draw a lot of inspirations and from them and they're as of my muses. So um, I think echoing CS, I think our project or our duel, it's mainly about amplifying people's whispers. So you take up some whispers, you take up some small voices, and then you try to amplify them in the process. And we also visualize them because we do exhibitions. So we have to visualize their voyage, visualizing their journeys. And so we take up some small bites of it, and then we make it into a feast, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's very interesting that because coming from the background of you both uh, looking into much more humanitarian art and also looking into um, uh, literature as well. So it, it's, it's, it becomes very interesting for me because, I mean, I, I'm architecturally trained and then we sort of ignore the importance of text um, 
because in architecture we use uh, quite a rather <laughs> different set of uh, vocabularies um well in fact in in the world you do have a very different interpretation or use of words to deliver the um different meaning even though it could be the same thing for example like cs mentioned about mundane uh, it could be uh, ordinary or it could be uh, something banal rather than uh, using the word mundane which is quite interesting that for us to look into the structure of the text and also the use of text um, in this case looking into the pavilion there are lots of text that sort of uh, imprinted on the roof um, I suppose that's also some relations to that um, if, if we, yeah maybe we can jump into the pavilions right away uh, because I saw the pavilions is sort of serve as a very it's almost like a real life uh, poetry um, there was a there was a saying that uh, architecture is the frozen artifact of text so well well the text itself is much more fluid so could you sh shall we talk about the um artwork and how what was the progress uh and also the inspiration sorry the process behind the artwork because i noticed there are some interesting texts um you know embedded mm -hmm. together in including into the design so i guess for for the listeners who have not then to Sai Kung Hoi, maybe I can give an overall picture first, and then Heaven could give us, us give us some uh, context about how we did the research and the writing part. That was really fun as well. So the art installation consists of, I guess, four components, and um, there is a um, like map, like furniture in, in the shape of map placed on the ground that people can sit on. And it's the five venues of this year's Sai Kung Hoi Festival. That, so that includes Sai Kung, where the artwork is located, and then Yim Tin Zai, Sharp Island, Gao Sai Zhao, and High Island. So on this furniture, there are uh, also fragments of the stories and grave, the 12 main uh, characters or the um, uh, like, like the main characters of the story uh, and grave as well, presented in form of ripples. So when you sit down, you can see the snapshots of the stories. And it also represents the ups and downs and the fluidity of the stories. So in the shape of kind of resonating with the uh, cycle hoi, like by the sea, that kind of um, moments of the stories. And when you look up, there is a colorful panels above the hat. So that is the uh, sort of the where the text is engraved. And uh, there is a, a series of keywords and poems uh, that we heard in Sai Kung Hoi that we find really strong and powerful. And because the text is engraved, you can also see uh, the shadows of the words um, that be cast on the ground when the sun shines. So it resonates with the, the weather elements we kind of um, weave into our concept as well because outdoor, uh, the artwork being outdoor is very challenging because of the materials and also the experience when people viewing uh, artwork outdoor, they might find it maybe too sunny or maybe it's too windy. So we kind of make that uh, experience underneath, you know, experience interacting with the weather kind of uh, part of our artwork as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the words. And you can see the poles um, that is connecting these furniture islands. These are the movements of the characters. So there are characters moving from Sai Kong to Yin Tin Zai, and we make that line into weave into the landscape of Sai Kong. So when you view it from uh, from some distance, you can see it almost like the landscape of Sai Kong, creating like uh, the mountain ridges, uh, things like that. So there inside the landscape, you can see people and people constitute like compose, you know, like the landscape of Sai Kong mm. as well. Mm. So you 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 see landscape in people, you see people in landscape. So it's kind of like a overlap of the yes. the the direction, which is quite interesting because I, I what what you mentioned, I think Clementine also mentioned about the muses and also poetry and also kind of like uh, messages. Um, well, especially with the, those are uh, very everyday kind of uh, messages appear and being translated in this artwork, which I find is kind of like objectify the poetry in a sense because what we say for example like uh, i see like nian nian you read this uh you know the words or um 
there are few words that um, appear in the art installation, it, usually what we can experience is through hearing. And now we can see it because it's kind of projected on the floor and also is um, embedded on the roof as well. Um, uh, sorry, Clementine, would you like to add on to that? Which yeah, I think is yeah. quite interesting, yeah. I love to. Um, I think, first of all, that um, this project, Joy Against Jory's Dashing Through the Weather Slaps, is about weather. So we would like to delineate and document something that we cannot really easily delineate in at first, um, which means weather is in the atmosphere and we try to capture that beauty of it um by writing stories and um, we we've been to the four islands of this year's festival and we wrote 12 stories based on 12 protagonists and main characters and then um all of them revolves around weather in general so we talked about some different extremes weather experiences of people or some rather mundane experience of of weather by by the characters and so they are all inspired by real stories while we add on our creativity as well so that is a mixture of writing like um fictionals or a real stories um experience um so situated at the outdoor environment of cyclone we also will we also pinpoint the elements of weather and how it intrudes people or intervenes people's experience at the exhibition because we have a weather forecast thing at the ex as part of the exhibitions so we have a portal there and then when you walked into the portals or when you walk around the portal you can see the story of the day which is dictated by that day's weather so if it's a gloomy day it's a rainy day you will see a rainy stories back in the time that we we we've written based on the stories that the villagers told us um, so when you go on a sunny day or a rather windy day, you will see a sunny or a windy story as well. So that is how we kind of play around with the weather element. Um, so we, based on the stories or based on the interviews that we've done, we also collected all of the really fun and interesting moments of people and then but they are like obviously when we interview people of the stories are in the past happened in the past so we would like to bring up the message that people can transcend time and space through reading a diary that share the same weather in cycle like decades ago so be it sunny or cold and um, so people when you visit the exhibition itself or the artwork itself we would like to highlight the fact that you're actually tra traversing time and space you are looking at somebody's lives decades ago so we would like to symbolize that and we would like to um let people resonate with the stories mm -hmm. happened in the past and and bring it importance and bring it a sense like life right now so we would like to connect people through time and space and through mm -hmm. weather itself too mm. so, so that's really our concept behind the artwork this time mm -hmm. so it seems like the text itself like words or literature is the connecting point between weathers and people and also the uh well, and also including a little bit of the landscape and architecture, but however, the poetry itself is a is a binder of all the stories. Mm. Um, I, I I do have a questions that uh, when we look into the text, is there any particular reason looking into or choosing those texts? I mean, I'm sure there must be some quite a painful process to choose out of so many texts as well. Uh, I guess the first 
first thing is to write the text. And that could maybe more relating to how we talk to people, how we collect the stories and how we talk to, you know, just daily normal villages and try to make them feel like, okay, your story is really interesting. And that's the point we want to bring out. So that's one part of, you know, choosing or, or uh, making the text. And the second thing is how to incorporate the text into the whole experience, because I guess no one would want to stand in a sunny day and try to read a long passage of, of other people's stories. So the text was, um, there are a few uh, parts that we chosen from the we have chosen from the text. The first one is on the on the portal. That's the supposed to be the entrance point of the whole artwork, and that's the most dramatic visual scene that we select. And we try to put like uh, the the story was happening in nineteen seventies, and then it was a sunny day, and then something happened. So we try to intrigue people with. Oh, what 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 what's happening? Why why that story of you know a a whale? I can see what was happening. I I don't I don't record as a whale in a scene a cycle. I never know that. So we try to intrigue people with the question, and then if they have the time, they could scan the QR code and download sort of the full weather for, uh, weather forecast, and that would be our full story. Mm-hmm. And then for the engraves on the panels, that would be the like the key sentence, like if we have to select um, one sentence from each story and make it a poem, a poem of Sai Kung Hoi, and what would it be? And that would be the most key and and powerful sentence that we put on the engraves, which we can view from a distance. And for the ripples, the text ripples on the furnitures, that would be relating to the island themselves. So geographically, there are uh, there are descriptions about how one was married with uh, another island's villagers. So that kind of um, connections between within within the landscape, um, between the islands, between the people. So that part will put on the island furniture themselves. Mm-hmm. So uh, anything to add on Clementine? Sorry. I I mainly see yeah. as that the that the job like introducing all of the processes and how, <laughs> how we settle the panels and everything. So, um, I think that's it for for how how we choose the words and how we choose the text for different panels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I I think there's also another layers that which is uh quite interesting that CS also mentioned about this um kind of like a visualizing the um invisible where text is often not able to grasp in the in your hand what you're able to listen but you can't um experience it uh physically that's where the pavilion comes uh, rather a powerful tool in a sense to translate the 2d or even uh, invisible elements into a 3d uh, experience where you can feel the height you can feel the width and the 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 space itself. Um, speaking of the space, I find the artwork is almost like an umbrella, which is very very highly associated with um people and weather because it's so it's it's I mean the structure itself is almost lightweight and uh, permeable because it's almost like a it's almost like an umbrella. However, what's happening is uh, on usually on the roof or the so called ceiling, it, it serves as like a like a layer like a transitional layer between the user, which is the people and the sky. Um, which I find it almost like an umbrella. Um, but looking into the um, um, the artwork or the pavilion or the installation itself, is there anything to add on? Um, looking into the challenges as well. Um, perhaps my question would be, you know, what would be the challenge in translating such a uh, almost intangible and it's hard to capture in terms of a physical element and now be- become a installation. Could you please uh, share with us on this, uh, you know, the the difficult part on, on 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 translating yeah. that? Because uh, there was a in initially when we were discussing what we could do in this location, and the design brief basically we have to do a 
entrance piece of Sai Kung Hoi. And we want to put people, we want to visualize people's uh, movements and, co uh, and connections. But then it's also very difficult to make the visitors feel relevant. So if it's just a catalog of stories, you can read it online, you can just put it in the pamphlet and it serves the same purpose that you can see, okay, second Hoist people are having, we're having very different modes of living, but also you can resonate with them. But then how do we make it spatially also relevant as well? So that they, they don't just look at a whole lot of text and then realizing, okay, I'm going to do my next thing. I'm, I'm going to hop on the ferry and go to the next place. So the whole experience is to have different levels. Like you have holistically, you can see the whole landscape, but then when you drill in, you will see some part of it based on the weather, based on the day you come. That creates kind of a um, sense of, you know, mystery. So I we have... We have uh, visitors that uh, DM us asking, okay, I, I came here two days, but then the weather was the same. So I, I saw the same stories. <laughs> <laughs> so where can I find the, the rest of the stories? And that was our, um, that was our intention <laughs> to make people come back again because uh, the, the weather itself has so much impact on the whole experience. And also, well, Cycle is really big. So <laughs> you should come back and see again. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That was the the way we tried to play it, play the um, you know the thinking of the of the audience of the visitors because we do want them to come back again, mm. and uh, and I we were very glad that uh, the curatorial team allowed us to do that <laughs> to make you know <laughs> those things to change the panels every day and we try to on our social media we also try to. Uh, give a version of online forecast as well, so so that people would would understand. Okay, I I didn't come maybe on a sunny day or a gloomy day or rainy day, but then I see the story. So so it's still there, although it's uh, on the story. So it's uh it's only for one day, but then at the end of the festival, we'll publish all stories. So mm -hmm. I guess it's also the fun part. What we really enjoy for for this work as well is that we mm -hmm. were able to change the elements of the of the artwork. Mm. I think that's very interesting because I sort of um, see now the um, metaphor of uh, whether it's kind of like a people movement, like the moving atlas as well. Because um, let's say when I'm in Malaysia and then you could experience the same stillness of weather, like it's the same rain, it's the same intensity of sunlight. Um, but the, the, the trees are not moving as the same manner as the you know, like two days ago, I, I, I saw because it moves differently. And also two days ago, I might see a motorcyclist sort of pass by the road. Now you don't see any anything else. So, so the experience of the weather is also not just a very singular kind of experience where you see the sun. It is a, it, what it is. You could measure it from the astronomical point of view. Like, for example, today is 35 degrees. It is 35 degrees. Um, but the experience of the same degree Celsius is different from today and tomorrow. So it's always changing. So there are so many, um, it's a very rich variations of experience where the weather is kind of like a overarching theme. Yeah. Um, yeah. I so, like your interpretation of it so much that you mentioned it's not a singular process, but also a multi-layer or a multi faceted um process or a co-creation process of it i loved it um also i like to add a little bit on how we turn the disadvantages or challenges into opportunity is that we've decided to use weather as the main theme and then we embrace that in our artwork um and by doing that i think it's an empowering process because we integrate weather the overarching theme and the un unseeable you know like it's it's not something so visible um we turn the invisibility into something visible and i think that's an empowering process for all of us because we try to capture that 
magical moments of different weathers of different days. And by doing that, we also enhance the connections with people. What I'm trying to say is that through the workshops we have conducted, um, we reconnected with people by letting them know the importance of the weather of the day. Um, for instance, we did two workshops and then during the workshops, we, as, as the workshops are basically um, all age friendly, so we designed the workshops into something easy and and um accessible in a way and then during the workshops we share with people and let people share with us their stories of different weather they experience in their life for instance a rather extreme weather or a rather extreme typhoon day that they had in their life and they share with us their stories and one of them came up to me and told me that it's a very empowering process because we seldom have a chance to gather together and then to talk about something so poetic or to talk about something so mundane that we would easily neglect in our days in our busy life in our humdrums but then she told me that it's an empowering process because we get to get ourselves together and then we share something so poetic and we share something so invisible and her words move me as well. So I think we kind of turn the challenges or the disadvantages of the project itself into an opportunity or into something advantages. And I think that's the beauty of our project and one mm -hmm. of the enhancements or one of the unforgettable moments of of the, such a project. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very interesting um, composition of words and also the design as well, how they intertwine together because um, it again is a very rich um, context in the sense that there are so many uh, inspirations sort of draw from different uh, point of view and directions that it's very hard to identify one artwork in one way. Uh, before we close off, I, I thought to ask something interesting. Um, since we talk about poetry and text and words, um, I thought to invite you both to maybe share one word. What do you think about the place? Um, maybe or, or even about the pavilion so maybe you can share one word to describe your experience of the place mm, I would choose the word providence perhaps it ah, means okay. God wills um, the will from above um, because when you come to the artwork or the pavilion that the weather sort of dictates your experience and it's you have to come and see the things that you are able to see by chance and i think that sort of resonates with providence itself mm, interesting because I, I i don't know why because somehow we do have a you know we 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 all know uh, what what it means by uh, feeling under the weather and i'm like why do you don't feeling good because you are feeling under the weather? So <laughs> it seems like a weather is sort of dictating your health as well. <laughs> I feel uh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, for for me, I guess I like the word magical, like for mm. our experience. Because when I was doing the research and I was kind of reflecting my own like personal stories with the weather, I could recall like moments from maybe from my elementary school like days when there is when there was a rainstorm outside and when it ends you can smell the the scent of the grass because my school was near a a was by the hillside so that that kind of brings me back like travel back in time and that was a really magical experience of making myself so important at the moment like it was so a lot of details coming back and 
I see where I am now, a lot of different dots connected. So I'll say, I hope to bring, maybe we hope to create the experience of bringing these magical, small magical moments of different peoples. Mm. That's very interesting. I, I, I is um, yeah. I mean, magic is a, is a, is a word. I can't remember. It's a, kind of like a. No, I can't remember the, the 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 movie where this lady with an umbrella just coming down from the sky. It kind of like reminds me of that when you describe it. It's about magic and uh, weather. Oh, I can't remember this movie. Oh, can't, oh, oh anyway. Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins. <laughs> it's kind oh, okay. of that kind of scene, but somehow pop out in my head. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, CS and Clementine. Very wonderful sharing from you both. And uh, I uh, well, I mean, uh, is is the installation gonna be there even after the festival, or I mean, perhaps for the visitors can um can check it out after that. I don't know. I don't know as well. I hope it stays. <laughs> but then, yeah, but that's the uh outdoor installation is always very challenging and that's part of the beauty of it yeah it's it's meant to be temporal like the weather so yeah. you just experience it at the time so yeah <laughs> thank you very much clementine and she is very 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 happy to see you both and have a chat with you on this so i wish you all the best and uh hopefully we will see you again thank you thank, thank you so much, thank you very much thank you, thank you very much